Good evening. We'll call the meeting to order. It's 501. Uh, and Alvin, if you would call the roll, please. All right, Commissioner Collins. Present. Commissioner Martinez. He, present. Commissioner Alminas. Here. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Ryan. He said here. Ryan, He's muted, muted, but he said here. Here. Yeah, he did. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bob Jordan. I don't see Commissioner Bonjour. Uh, Isn't he there? And he's he's at. All right, uh, Commissioner Bonjour is absent. Oh, oh, I thought he was sitting there. Okay, then that will bring us to the first item, which is the property known as fourteen seventy eight Parker Street, um, which is the Bass Pond. So GZA. Good evening, Commission members. This is Dan Nitsche. You want me to go ahead, Chris, or you guys? Yes, want to go, say go right ahead, Dan. All right, thanks very much. So, uh, long delay. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we had to run the gauntlet with DEP, um, meaning they required a, a certificate of compliance to be applied for for the so, so for the superseding orders of conditions that they held for both Bath Pond. And for Forest Park, we have filed that. We had a walk uh, last Thursday. I did with uh, Mike McHugh from DEP. He said because he's a little backed up, he won't get the actual paperwork out. But he goes, I see no issues. Uh, he's communicated with David Fowles, who managed basically managed the SOC for DEP for many years on the herbicide treatment. He goes, I don't see any particular issues here. Um, he he was actually supportive of or indicated that the uh, the frag the Phragmites in Bass Pond, which is the population's expanded significantly in the last five years since I've been there, it most of that population is within land underwater, and that would be within a treatment area. So that we may get a little, the, the, the pond association folks may get a little bit extra treatment on the frag population just along the margin um, because of, just because of where it is, it's within a zone we can actually treat. Uh, if it's in the bank or BVW, we're not allowed to treat in that. It has to be within land underwater. And and we found that most of the population is in the land underwater area. Um, so we'll, we'll, you know, so just so just so, just to give people a heads up that if the frag mighty starts dying out there, it was it's 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 OK with DEP that that's that that's going on. So. Uh, we are just going to maintain the same protocols we've done in the past in terms of letting people know, licensed herbicide people, um, and uh, and that's it. You know, for 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 the bass pond, there's not going to be any change other than what I just mentioned about um, the the phragmites will start to be treated just because of where it's located and the the chemical the pond the chemical that we put in the water will actually kill some of that as well. So, Dan, a quick question: the the superseding order. Yeah. When was that issued? That was, oh my gosh, that was issued. We got at least four extensions from DEP. So that was, that's three years each. So that's 12 years, maybe 15 years ago. So you did have extensions. It wasn't expired. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had extensions constantly okay. from DEP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave Fallis would have not, not allowed us to, to not okay. have provided all the monitoring. Right, exactly. Yep. And then, as you are aware, and as the commission is aware, DEP is essentially kicking it back to the commissions to give us a, uh, an order because they don't want to be the holder of the superseding order and be having to monitor what we're doing. They, they want this to be back at the local level. That's what they've told us. Well, they've got more staff than we do. Maybe yeah, we I know. Like them to say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But you so know, if it's, we, it's, so if it's we deny it, right? they'll issue a superseding order, right? But there you then go. They'll have, to <laughs> they'll have no choice. <laughs> and then next year, and in three years, they'll remand us back to do this all over again. So yeah, hopefully we don't get into a circle with that. But <laughs> I say that a bit tongue in cheek because we are without staff. I know. Um, yeah. And there, you could make a solid argument for denying it, knowing that the state will go forward with a superseding order because they do have the staff to monitor and we don't at this point. Right. 
but the mon monitoring that DEP did, they never physically went there. They just took our reports. So they reviewed the reports that went in. So, I mean, it wasn't like they spent any time going to the site. Oh, no, I didn't think they physically went. Um, we don't have a staff person to review the report. Oh, to even review reports, right. Yeah. We don't, right now we're without a staff person. Um, and it's been a while and it's difficult locating people. Yes, that's what I'm hearing. So it is something for commissioners to consider that if you, if we want to have DEP take the take on the onus of, of uh, doing the monitoring and reading the reports, um, an option would be to deny, knowing that they're going to issue a superseding order. Even though I think we're we, we're not really opposed to the treatment, um, yeah. it's more of a procedural thing for us. Not having the ability to be able to enforce or monitor an order that we issue. And if the state we're, took it over, they would they would automatically um, uh, monitor it all, all the time? No, they won't monitor. They'll only review our reports when we send in if they condition it to do reports, which is normal. I mean, we could, cut, you know, when we write a report, we could come to the commission meeting and explain it or come to a Zoom meeting and explain it to the commission if that would help them be more informed without having to put more effort into it. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, we really want to keep this at the local level. I don't want to deal with DEP. They don't want to deal with us either. And so let's, I, I mean, I would like to figure out a way to help you guys understand what's going on to the, to the extent that we can do that and make it a condition that someone comes we to the meeting to and We may put a special present. condition in that until we've got sufficient staff yeah. to actually analyze reports that you would be required to present um, the reportings on the reporting timetable to directly to the commission. Okay. That we wouldn't be, that you wouldn't object to having that in the, uh, in, the in an order. Say, say that again though, Chris, it was, I, I said, you would not object to having that special order included in the order of conditions. Would you say it one more time? What the special order would be though. Just so let that I'm clear. You would, that reports would not be mailed in until such time as the commission has staff that they would actually be pre presented at commission meetings. Yeah, I think that's fair. Sure. Yeah. Alvin, were you following that discussion? Yes, I, I got I, I received it. That's that sounds good until we get somebody that yeah. It does sound good. Yeah, that way we're you know, we're coming to you and just explaining what's going on. And you can ask individual questions at that time. So because that's my concern about it, is we just don't right now have the staff and the expertise mm -hmm. at this point. So yeah. Because um, so, then if we uh, let it go to the state, then we lose a little control. It's a little, yeah, a little bit, but I, you I still have the ordinance. That, I think we're probably going to the, the, the chemicals that they're using and the procedures they're using are the same as that have been used in the past. Right. Correct. So I don't Nothing believe new. we would be looking to change or ban chemicals. So I don't know that we're giving anything up because I think we would be allowing... Uh, the procedures that set forth, where uh -huh. before, in the way, way back when it started, there were chemicals that were being pro proposed to be used that we didn't believe were safe. Uh, chemicals have come a long way, and they are diff they're using different chemicals over the pre period of 12 years since this started. Right. Yeah. Yep. Do you have anything else, Dan? No, I do not. Sorry, I'm I'm done. Yep. Are there questions from uh, committee committee members, commission members? No. None. No. Then we can we can we can close the public hearing, but we wouldn't be able. To, we would have to vote. We can't vote on the because we're still in Zoom. On right. uh, actually oh, issuing right. the order until the next meeting, so we can okay. close this evening, but we'd have to wait till next meeting to vote on to give on an order because we are still in Zoom, and we have to allow the opportunity for anybody in the public who may want to give comments to either call the office or whose email are we using right now, Alvin? 
Uh, either mine or Phil's. Uh, or we'll go to Phil. So Pedro me at city hall at springfieldcityhall.com. Okay. So this is recorded that if there's anybody that wanted to present comment, they could present it that way. Okay. Having but if said you, that, it, yep. Go ahead. If you close the meeting, though, the hearing, they're not going to be able to give you any comments in the next two weeks, are they? Because you'll have closed right. the we meeting. We really can't close this hearing no, you, until two weeks from now. You need to leave so it we open. Can, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a, uh, an order prepared so we okay. can close and issue right. an order. That'd be great. Exactly. Now. Yeah, just to see, just to give the public an opportunity. But I, I, would, right. I would hate for them to feel like we've shut them off, so. Right. And it's not like we haven't had multiple public hearings on this. That, that's true. That's true. So then at the at the request of the applicant, a, a motion to continue this to our next meeting is in order. I so move. Thank you, Francis. Is I there second. a second? Thank you, Juanita. Alvin, if you'd call the roll. Yes, uh, Commissioner Collins. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Martinez? Yes. Commissioner Alvinas? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Miller? Commissioner Miller? Fred? Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Uh, and Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Paul is present also. And Paul is here, by the way. Oh, okay. He came in right after we started. <laughs> okay, if we can recognize uh, Commissioner Bonjourney, and then also would like to ask uh, um, if you're uh, in favor Your of- mic's off, Paul. Anyways. Yes. Paul, you, you, oh, okay, he said yes. All right. Thank you. I guess he can only give us visual or audio at one time because he <laughs> shut his he shut his visual. <laughs> oh, I've is. been having uh, technical difficulties all day. I apologize. Oh, well, that's no problem. Okay, but then when does the it continue item, to? Oh, when does it continue to? Sorry, the next meeting, well, which is I, probably oh. two weeks from now. Oh, just two weeks from now. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Um, so the next item is the very basically the same procedure for the. Forest Park Aquatic Pond Management. Just yes, for clarification, yes. the, the next meeting will be May 9th. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so uh, same exact thing, same treatment methodology. Uh, again, we di uh, did a, a walk with DEP for the superseding order. We will be getting that. They have no issue, excuse me, a certificate of compliance for the superseding order. Um, Mike McHugh uh, identified he had no issues with any of the project, anything that's going on out there. So uh, he'll be issuing it. It's just going to take him a, about a week or so to get the paperwork out to us. And we'll send that to you guys when we get it. Uh, but, it's, I, you know, I think that the same kind of conditions that you talked about for, for uh, Bass Pond obviously apply here as well. Okay. Um, we will put that same, we'll put that special order in there about uh, the reports being presented to the commission live. Okay. So a motion to continue the, at the applicant's request to continue the public hearing uh, till May 9th is what you said, right, Alvin? That's correct. Is there a motion to do that? I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for uh, Forest Park Pond treatment until May 9th. I'll second. Is there, <clears throat> was that Clarence, okay. did you? Yes, I think sir. that was you that seconded it, right? Yes, yes. Okay, um, Alvin, if you'd call the roll. Yes, uh, Commissioner Collins. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Commissioner Alvinas. Yes. Commissioner Miller. He said yes. He oh. said yes. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Commissioner Bajorni? Yes. Continuance. Okay, more than enough. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yep, take care. So, item three is Greenleaf Park. And I see the park 
department is here. Hi, Anya Duffy here with GZA on behalf of uh, representing the Parks Department. Um, want me to go ahead? Yep, go right ahead. Sure. So since um, our last meeting two weeks ago, um, we put together a dewatering plan in response to DEP's comments. Um, and I can share that with the group and also the letter. Um, we had sent the letter to Phil today. I don't know if that was circulated. Um, it was. Okay, great. I will share my screen. Um, so let's see, I'll start with the letter. Um, and we have uh, DEP's comments and italics and GZA's responses in bold type. Their first comment had to do with um, invasive species removal and um, they, had, they were asking um, if we were complying with 310 CMR 10, dot 5A, 5A, it's invasive species removal. Um, the removal must be viewed as a consistent and ongoing operation. Otherwise, the invasive, invasive species will return and the improvement will be short-lived. Our response basically says that we are providing invasive species removal um, as part of um, a, a improving the Riverfront Act. So it's actually a different um, part of the, the regulations. It's not that we are just offering this up as, um, you know, doing invasive species removal and doing it ongoing. It's more so a function of improving the, um, the stormwater and the riverfront. So um, we are, providing um, storm damage and pollution prevention in addition to wildlife habitat enhancement by um, fixing the erosion and the failed headwall. Um, we are proposing to stabilize the existing eroding embankment and implementing vegetative buffers um, along the impervious, impervious areas. And we are improving the existing damaged infrastructure. And this um, invasive species removal is incidental to that. So as we are going in there and making these improvements and repairs, we will be um, removing the invasive species, but it is not um, planned to be an ongoing, um, very extensive program. I mean, there's a lot of bittersweet down there. I think the parks department will do as best as they can. They will be maintaining this outfall. Um, I'll get to that in the next comment, but it, it is not, I'm intended to be meeting this particular um, part of the act. Um, the second comment had to do with continued maintenance of the area. Um, and um, they asked if, if there's an O&M plan in place. And um, we are referring to the city's overall open space and recreation plan which does um, call for continual maintenance and evaluation of um, improvement, park improvements. Um, furthermore, the, uh, there, go the ahead. The park also has an ongoing maintenance order with the commission. They just oh. notify us, they do. Oh, good, good. Okay, so we, we could probably add, add that to it as well. Right. I did read it, reach out to DPW um, because the, does kind of fall within their um, infrastructure, and they um, they didn't they the person the individual I spoke with um, didn't have a um, particular plan um, that he referenced, but um, I'm thinking that there probably is one as part of the city's MS4 permit that they have to um, conduct maintenance of their stormwater outfalls. Just don't know how much it gets done. So, but it being in a park, it being, you know, right, uh, highly visible along that pathway between the school and the senior center or the community center, um, you know, it's not going to be hidden, forgotten. It will be maintained, is my understanding. Um, and then finally, the dewatering plan. The um, they asked for more detail of how, um, you know, during the construction the area will be dewatered and I can read through this 
quickly and then I'll go to the plan. Um, so we, um, first, I'm just gonna read it rather than trying to summarize. GZA reviewed and referenced information on construction dewatering. The project is subject to a time of year restrictions under US Army Corps for non-tidal waters, which extends from October 1 to June 1. Additionally, the project is not mapped as a cold water fishery as defined at, at in 310 CMR 1004. The plan submitted, um, which I'll get to, shows the location of the proposed systems to control water during the construction of the headwall. The actual dewatering bypass may vary from that described herein. Um, our plans and specs show general intent of uh, requirement requirements, but dewatering is typically typically the contractor's means and methods. Um, the proposed systems are anticipated to consist of coffer dams and the use of diversion pipes and pumps to bypass stream flow. Temporary coffer dams will be utilized to isolate the construction area from downstream and the northern wetland area. Temporary coffer dams such as sandbags with plastic sheeting will be installed within the existing drainage outfalls. Those are the 42 and the 54 inch diameter pipes. I'll show a detail of that. Um, and then temporary diversion pipes uh, will be utilized to bypass flow from the existing outfalls. The temporary diversion pipes will provide passage to aquatic organisms. If aquatic organisms are observed within the work area following the installation of the water control systems, they will be re relocated. To control the flow of the existing 12 inch pipe, which is the third pipe that outlets here, an inflatable plug will be installed to stop flow at the head wall and stormwater will be pumped from the upgradient drainage manhole in discharge downstream of the coffer dam. As needed, the construction area will be dewatered by pumping from a filtered low level sump. Discharge from the sump will be pumped to a sediment filtration geotextile bag or equivalent and, and then discharge to the resource area. Um, here's that plan. I'll zoom in a little bit. So we have our 42 inch pipe, our 54 inch pipe and our 12 inch pipe all outletting at this new head wall, which is this longer line. Um, this was the existing head wall that we are removing, putting the new head wall behind it. This is basically the work area here. So downstream of the work area, we have a coffer dam. Um, in section view in one of those pipes, there's also a sandbag dam right inside of that pipe with a 12 or 18 inch plastic pipe that goes through that sandbag wall. And um, I have to get a little highlighter. So here's that pipe and it would go to the uh, through the coffer dam wall, so water can then pass through. And then this construction of the concrete head wall would have to be done around that pipe. It'll take a little care and finesse to do, um, but it is doable. Um, as this, you know, if or as this fills up with water, there is a pump here that can pump the water to a um, dewatering bag so that the water is cleared of sediment and then it can flow over land back into the resource area. There was a, a pump and a, and a like a, it's basically like a geotextile sack which um, allows the water to flow through and removes the sediment. And this is a, for the 12 inch pipe, this is a picture of um, the bypass pump, suction pump that would, if this manhole fills up, that water would be pumped downstream through a, a well, this water would be clean, so it wouldn't have to have a um, dewatering bag associated with it. It would just be, you know, storm water that enters this catch basin. So we think this satisfies um, DP's comments. It shows the intent, but um, means and methods may vary. Um, we will be um, 
uh, involved during the construction of this. Um, we, we have weekly meetings, so we'll be reviewing this. And for this particular portion, we'll probably be on site more than once a week um, to review the work. Does anyone have any questions about the dewatering or the invasive species removal or um, the other comment, which was the O&M? Uh, any commissioner, I, I thought it was, I thought your answers to their questions were very clear. Um, I would just add that we do have an ongoing maintenance order with the park department anyway. I think that helps. It does. Any other, com any commissioners have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Can you go back to that? Um, the the diagram the, the yeah that one so the three the three pipes that are going in do they all go to one they don't do they go to They're, one area to one that one blue so it's, pipe it's one head wall yeah. I I don't have a picture I don't have a photo queued up but I think right. there is one in the report it's one head wall and it's three openings it's three pipes three openings okay yes and then and that, you see those three go into one is that nope they just daylight right into the river so oh, this okay. is a culverted perennial stream that is just culverted through greenleaf park so on the other side of greenleaf park on senator ave it's it's daylit for a little for a minute <laughs> it goes under the road actually and it, there's a big okay. conservation area up there so for like 700 feet within the park it's in a 54 inch pipe Okay. And so this is the head wall um, that is also taking a, a sizable storm drain from the neighborhoods to the north, which are probably also streams <laughs> right. and groundwater flow. And this is just a catch basin at the end of Princess Ave. Okay. So they're and all dumping this, right here. So this stream that they're uh, going into, does it have a name? It's unnamed. Oh, but it, it it continues down into water shops basically, but there is a little pond. Let me pull up um, Mass Mapper. Um, there's a little body of water before it goes under Parker. Under Parker or under South under uh, uh, Breckwood? Doesn't this go down by Breckwood? No. No. Let no. me check. Moon Pond, where am I? 16 acres. Here we go. All right. So this mill pond it goes into mill pond. And then oh, this, okay. this has to go underground. I think when you're on Parker, you see some water on this side. This is the south branch of the Mill River. So the water on that side is called Parker Falls. It's it's beautiful. It looks yep. beautiful. It looks like there are there trails in there or yeah. there. Oh, yes. Yeah. At one point, that was a a park that ran you see where her cursor is yeah it ran through that entire wooded area with overlooks and oh and, gorgeous and, and it ran all the way down uh to water shops down down to the yeah wow we got to bring it back <laughs> it's yeah just it a was nice, a very nice park at one nice point. corridor so yeah this this is where it ends up in milt pond firstly and then it all flows into water shops and into the okay. little river in the Connecticut. But yeah, this is, um, so it shows up as a, you know, a stream or a, a unnamed perennial stream, <clears throat> but it's, um, it's all underground throughout the park. This is a walkway, not a river, but here you see it, it's open. And so we delineated all this, there's a the little bordering vegetated wetland associated with that. Um, and then down here, there's a little bit of BVW that we show on our plants. Okay, and thank this you. Is, you're welcome. Are there any other questions? Andrew, I had a question back in uh, number two, the details in number two, uh, there was tree and brush removal how substantial will be the tree removal? So there is one on this um, grading plan, 
the um, these existing contours, this is there's quite a bit of erosion right here, and it's undermining the existing headwall. I need to pull up a picture in order to see it better. But that there was a tree, there's a tree right there on the side of the bank, and water has just eroded through there. That tree has yeah. got to go. So that one's yeah. out of there. I don't think that there are other you know, sizable, you know, bigger than 12 inch trees on this bank. It's just a lot of brush. Um, and in order to restabilize this slope, um, I'm gonna draw a little polygon, but basically, you know, this would be debrushed and on the other side as well to, to, in order to regrade the slopes to make, to make them stable. And then all this back area, which is upland and on the upper side of the headwall, um, it is just covered in a oh, bittersweet. So we're going to be going in there and we need construction access. We need to rebuild this thing. As they work their way out, they would just put lawn, establish lawn and, and maintain it as such. Um, so no, so no, in, no great in tree. In the two areas just, that you just outlined, you're going to... When you stabilize the bank, it's going to be grass and seed, or is it going to be no? A it's going to flower mix, or it's going to be a, be it's a they're steeper slopes. Um, Stabilization vegetation. Yeah. It's going to have vegetate. It's going to have a armored slope, but it's going to be covered in topsoil and then um, seeded with a conservation seed mix. So it's a red a a conservation seed mix. I thought yeah, that's what it's I was a, looking. It's okay. a vegetated. Yeah. Um, embankment or revetment. Yep. It's kind of like what we're doing on Tiffany by the uh, yeah that roaded area. So this shows it better. Um, this has like a looks like gravel. This is right. all like a um, mm. a revetment, and then we add um, soil mix and to fill the void spaces, and then it is um, planted with seed mix and covered with a an erosion control blanket so it doesn't blow away first rainstorm. Thank you. So that'll, that'll grow in. Um, and I think, you know, they'll do like yearly mowings just to keep the woody vegetation down. Although trees on that slope wouldn't be a, a big deal or issue. It was just at this point, there was erosion happening because of how the site was graded to it. Um, we're regrading the site so that water can, you know, not be channelized to that one point. So if if trees are allowed to grow on that bank, I don't think it's an issue. I mean, there's trees along river fronts everywhere. Um, we're just not planting any trees. They'll be there eventually. <laughs> Other questions? No. Hearing none, you can unshare your screen. And is there, again, this one would have to be continued. So if anyone from the public wants to provide comment, they can either call at 787-6020, correct, Alvin? That's correct. Or, or leave comments uh, through email to pdromi at springfieldcityhall.com. And after saying that, is there a motion to continue to the next meeting? Good. Good. Uh, was that Francis? Did you say that yeah. I make a motion? Thank yes. You. And I'll, a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Clarence. Well, Alvin, if you'd call the roll. Yes, for continuance, uh, Commissioner uh, Bongiorni. Yes. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Miller. He said yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Alminas? Yes. Commissioner Martinez? Yes. And Commissioner, Commissioner Collins? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. And um, now, Alvin, <laughs> on the agenda, we've got the, the one for Boston Road listed twice, once as new and once as old. 
Yeah, so there's two separate lots, but I'm asking that you guys uh, hear both together and then give two separate uh, uh, motions. Okay, but they're under one file number, right? Oh, no, they're not. They're under two file numbers. Okay. All right. Um, so we do have, have someone here in the audience who will present. Sure. And, um, I um, took a picture of his uh, yeah. his board here to uh, hopefully it will show clearly when I share a screen. So whenever you're ready. Yes, that, that might be. Uh, and, and I'm sure when you see the uh, the plan on the screen before you, you'll, you'll see why we're trying to deal with them in, in one uh uh, rather than having two separate uh, discussions about what's essentially one single pro uh, project, but um, I will hand you the uh, uh, mail notifications. Thank um, you. Can you just give your name and Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was about to uh, begin. I just, without seeing a plan on the screen, I feel naked. Uh, my name is John Masick. I'm here from R. Lebeck Associates on behalf of our client, uh, Graham's Construction. Um, for the uh, uh, proposal to uh, construct two single family homes uh, on uh, two separate lots located on the westerly side of uh, Leach Street. Um, and as you can see, uh, there is a good reason for trying to present these as, as one project, um, despite the, the two filings. Um, there are two lots uh, located directly uh, adjacent to each other. Um, the properties, as, as noted, they're on the westerly side of Leach Street. Uh, there's a lot A to the uh, north, which is approximately 31,500 square feet, and then a lot B southerly of that, uh, which is approximately uh, 23,700 square feet, as I recall. And both lots uh, have an isolated vegetated wetland uh, located uh, Westerly of the proposed uh, houses uh, at the rear of the lots, if you will. Um, there is no BVW. Um, there are no other resource areas other than this isolated wetland um, that was uh, <laughs> delineated by uh, our Lebec Associates personnel and uh, survey located by Smith Associates surveyors. Um, the proposed uh, houses are, are to be uh, located, uh, you know, obviously easterly of the, the IVW. We're proposing uh, uh, silk fence to be located approximately at the uh, 50 foot buffer. Um, there'll be no work uh, within between the 50 and one uh, uh, between the 50 foot buffer and the isolated wetland. Um, you know, there's going to be some minimal grading as required to. Uh, uh, grade uh, stormwater around the house. Uh, we have uh, uh, actually these are the, the houses that are intended to be built. We have uh, uh, plans, uh, house plans for for both lots. So um, they're obviously situated uh, at or near the front setback to minimize any disturbance within the resource areas. Um, you know, it's a, a relatively straightforward, uh, you know, strictly buffer zone uh, uh, to the IVW that, that we're proposing in, in, on both lots, quite frankly. So the lot lines continue quite a ways back, don't they? Yes, they do. They, the, the lots are, are, are relatively deep, yes, especially compared to the adjacent lots, correct. So are you proposing any monumentation um, at the 50 foot about no disturbance from that point on? Uh, this plan does not show that. I, I, I'm sure if that is the commission's uh, request, we can. Uh, the, the, they would like us to do that, and it were you know written up in, in the order. Uh, we'd be more than happy to to do that. It looks like there'd probably be you know no more than you know probably six or eight total. So I'm sure our client would be amenable to to such action. Yeah, because whoever buys the house just never generally aren't that aware of environmental uh, issues or the fact that they can't do anything closer than 50 feet. So having the monumentation and having it uh, noted and presented at the point of sale is very helpful for the homeowner so that they don't do something that they shouldn't. Agree. We see it all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> And we had, didn't we, uh, 
few years back talk about doing the actual uh, cement little blocks so that instead of being, because there was a time there was, was planting of, of trees or bushes and uh, that went for the cement, didn't we? We've done um, both. We've done in some areas, we've just done markers. And yeah. in some areas, uh, actually at the request of some of the applicants, they wanted to put a row of hedges uh -huh. um, for demarcation. When you said you'd put markers in, what were you, what kind of markers are you anticipating putting in? Uh, whatever the commission recommends. Uh, you know, we we if if you'd like us to uh, install, you know, permanent monuments of some sort. Uh, I I always caution against uh, the the actual concrete markers, um, the survey markers, only because they can be confused. Uh, uh, down the road by by surveyors if they're you know set in the, you know particular areas but um, you know oftentimes I've we've I've seen and we've used uh, like either uh, lolly columns that have been uh, you know cut to length and installed or sometimes PVC pipe with uh, concrete and sometimes with or without a W put in the the top um, but uh, I'm not sure what the the commission is generally. Uh, look for yeah that. i think the lolly column type thing is what we're i know we don't want it to get confused with boundary markers obviously. exactly that's always a but lo isn't the lolly column isn't that made out of wood no, no they're, they're typically a metal pipe filled with concrete that's exactly oh, okay right. what's in your basement generally <laughs> is a lolly column okay yeah because those folks don't really have much of a backyard i mean well, they've got to the 50, the, the silk fence is about at the 100, right? Yeah. No, that's the, the 50 there. That's the 50. That is correct. Yeah, so they're... The 100 runs right through the house. It yes, runs it right through I the said, house. So they, they, they won't have much of a yard, so the tendency for them to want to expand their yard is going to be there. I cannot argue. Yeah. So um, hence, I think the even more necessary for the monumentation. Um, yeah. Other commissioners. What's the protection for the wetland? Yeah, follow up question on. Projection. What are the, how about, what are the uh, ordinance on the on <clears throat> protecting the wetland? That's protected. On uh, go ahead, you can answer if you'd like. Well, I mean, it, it's an isolated vegetated wetland, so it just falls under the jurisdiction of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the local ordinance. Uh, there's no, uh, we, we did not defile with Mass DEP for uh, anything, uh, any work associated with this project. So it's uh, all, all local. So we have a, we have an ordinance in Springfield, Francis, that covers some things that were not necessarily covered in the state law, like the isolated land subject that are flooded or isolated wetlands um, and that may or may not be covered depending upon size in the state law, they are covered in our local ordinance. Thank you, thank you very much. And the local ordinance is where you get that 50 foot that says that there can be no disturbance within 50 foot, 50 feet of the identified edge of that isolated wetland. Thank and you. most people when they're buying a house wouldn't realize that. Right. Other questions? Any, any, everybody else satisfied other than the monumentation that uh, with the plans as presented? Yeah. Then a motion to continue um, to the next hearing and Alvin, you've been listening. So in the order, we would want to include that there would be monumentation along the 50 foot, no disturb line. That would become a special order. A motion to continue to the next meeting is in order. I'll make my first motion to continue. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Juanita. Alvin, if you'd call the roll. Good. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Commissioner Alvinas. 
Yes. Commissioner Miller? Nodded yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. And Commissioner Bongiorni? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And just want to clarify that's for uh, both uh, matters. Uh, item number one and number two. Item number one and number two, right. Um, I'm assuming that he wants that we'll issue separate orders, one for each lot, but they'd be the same. Because those are going to be sold as individual homes. So they're going to want their own order of conditions. Yes, and that's the way why we submitted it. That's, that's why you submitted it the way you did. It's got yeah, number yeah, 7345 and 7346. Correct. Okay, uh, under all other matters, under Liberty Street matter, um, I did, I was on a conference call with um, Councilor Allen and the city, and the city is trying to locate money, um, and they're supposed to get back to us. Uh, the finance mm -hmm. department was on there. This is the one for that, that would come before your committee? Yes, and it wasn't that, uh, wasn't that, um, 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 oh gosh. You said Allen, isn't it? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't. It was Fenton. Yes, Fenton, you're right. Fenton. That's it. Um, and and the finance department was on there thinking that they might look for, rather than have us fund and then try to back, you know, replenish our account, that they're going to look around and see if they can find some money. That's good. Um, Wherever it comes from, it'll be good. Right. <laughs> it'll be good for us. So good. the item B is the CR4 bacteria sampling, which we do every year. Um, did we get another one, Alvin? Did we also get one about the um, sponsoring water testing on the Chickabee? Did that come in? Or is this the one? I am not certain. I'm not sure exactly what this uh, corresponds to. Because when, when I read the letter, I think this is actually, remember how we we always participated with a sample of water along the Chicopee that goes into the Connecticut for, um, they do during the short, swimming season, during the summer times, spring and summer, they sample on a periodic basis. And we've been part of that uh, program. Matter of fact, I think we sponsored a couple of sampling sites, if I recall. Did... Mm. I don't that remember. Sounds... I, I don't know if they've sent that request in yet, but in the past we have. That sounds familiar. I think it was like a hundred dollars per site, and they had volunteers do the collecting. It was for the for the testing and the materials. I I don't know that that request has actually come forward yet, but I would anticipate it would if since we're they're going to go forward with the program. Any other issues? You know, um, I, you most of you must get the um, the newsletter from Mark Stinson from the DEP. Do you all get that? Because um, the last newsletter said that he's he's at a point now he can sign up new members and take away members that are not here anymore. So. Do the do does everybody get that? It comes from the DEP. It's called the uh, Western the circuit. Regional Circuit Newsletter. Yeah, it's the Circuit Writers Newsletter. You know what? I'll I'll post that that last one where you can you can just take it, download it, and um, if you want it, just send your email and they'll send it to you. And Alvin, in the meantime, while while we need to post that one. Um, check with Kevin about how, because we've got some new commissioners whose names have to be added to that list. Uh, okay. We pay dues for our members, so they'll get, so they'll end up getting that newsletter themselves. So what, what is the list again? I'm sorry. It, it's, it goes with the Mass uh, Association of Conservation Commissions, MACC, and they okay. send out this they send out a newsletter. 
Yeah, I just got it. I just found it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, because yeah, Clarence, you should have been on the mailing list. Um, but Paul probably isn't, and Francis probably isn't. And you're not and either, Fred, Fred? Fred said he's not either. Because so that's you, good. that tells you, you when there's... If you just give Kevin a call and find out where he sent the new names to, he had a contact that he would send them to. Okay. I'll check on And that. also for new members, the that'll help, um, that'll let you know when there's going to be some um, uh, programs, some workshops to let you know, to better understand the different aspects of the conservation commissions. Yeah, and they have, they have workshops all the way from plant identification to yeah. just sections right. of the law to, they've got all kinds of workshops that if you want to take them, avail yourselves of, you can. Francis, I'm glad there's somebody else on the commission who's old enough to remember that there was a park along the South Branch Parkway that went all the way from that waterfalls at Parker Street down to uh, Watershed What's Farm. The, where's an access for that, for those trails? Well, you used to go on right from Parker. Parker and what? Um, down from Wilbraham where they where they redid it and there's like a bridge going over the dam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right in there. Uh-huh. And I'm there's sure this. there were access points, Francis, all the way down along the line in the old days. Yeah, we, we come in, we come in from uh the, the golf course but Juanita you can't there's a small little grassy area so it, it, it I, I would not park on Parker <laughs> no. anyway at the bridge you can't appreciate the waterfall you almost have to go uh, oh I know where that waterfall is now remember yeah. we had a house didn't we have a house that it was behind the chiropractor remember all the deal with the chiropractor on yeah. And then there was a house that these women wanted to add on. And yeah, now, and this when is we went down to look at that, yeah, I the know where it is. is now. actually across the street. If, you, if you're driving, you'll notice what looks like a bridge there. Right, right. I, um, because yeah. when we went to look at the house, they took us to the waterfall. Right. right. What, what's, okay. what's the one that's running in front of my house? What's that brook? And around the, along the side of my house. It's uh, between uh, Burt. And Bradley, then when it gets to Allen, it kind of cuts around and goes. Ready for a weird name? Church. It's like Schnipps at, uh, at on Burton, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that that uh, that drains water shop. Yeah, uh, I'm walking with a man named John Zeb. Grew up on Bridal Path. I'm not going to speak too long. We have gone out for this. Will be the tenth Monday or Tuesday, depending on which day we go. We have done every foot of Watershop Pond, and to, and for the last two weeks, we have discovered the forested area around Forest Park. I mean, the duck ponds and the roads are 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 wonderful that they're there, but the public cannot appreciate the terrain um, south to, to up uphill to to Long Meadow and Porter Lake Road. I, I'm a Berkshire boy from Western Mass, and I'm in my glory when we're walking. And if you go, if you go, if you're coming down the hill from like where Echoes is, Francis, and you get to the duck ponds, and you've got the one on your right that's got the stone house on it. Oh yes, yeah. But if before you get to that pond, if you take a right and go up, up to the top, there's a beautiful beech grove up top there. They, mm. It's called Commissioner's Hill. It's got huge, huge beech trees in there. Okay. I'll be taking that one in in a week or so. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great spot. Uh -huh. Anything else? Then a motion to adjourn is in order. I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second. There a second. Thank you, Peter. Alvin, if you've called the roll. Great. Uh, for, for adjourning the meeting, um, Commissioner Bajorni. Yes. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Miller. He said yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alminas. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Commissioner Collins. Yes.
Thank you, everybody. Great. Thank you.